and the studying of these atmospheric rivers and that information yeah. is so crucial, especially when they continue to threaten California with these flood fronts. Uh, they are also leading to a great start, by the way, for the western snowpack as well as the drought, the very parched land throughout the state of California. Yeah, it's anything but parched, right? We've been talking about how it's waterlogged. It's all yeah. courtesy of the Parade of Storm. So let's dive into the science a little bit more. Professor of Atmospheric Sciences at the Desert Research Institute. That's going to be Ben Hatchett joins us now with more. Ben, thank you for joining us here on Fox Weather and kind of give us an update. Where does the snowpack stand so far this season? And I hear April 1st always referred to in that event. Why we use that date as well? So we're off. First, of all, I guess, thanks for having me. Um, it's always great to chat with you all. Um, so we're off to a fantastic start snowpack wise throughout much of the central tier of the western U.S. So northern California, central California, Nevada and Utah in particular, as well as northern Arizona and western Colorado are all well ahead of schedule in terms of accumulating the winter snowpack that we so rely upon to meet our water needs. And April 1st is an important date because that's roughly when we expect our peak snowpack to occur. And so historically, between March and May, typically around April, uh, maximum snowpack is achieved. And that's where we can make all of our decisions for how much water do we have, where's that water going to go, and how can we use it. And at this point, many stations are starting to approach a level of snowpack that we normally see at peak snowpack time in late April, or excuse me, uh, late March through early May, so throughout kind of that um, spring period. So we're off to a really fantastic start. Yeah, especially when you consider, I mean, we're only halfway through January, so yeah. we still have plenty of time to cash in on hopefully some more moisture heading our way. I want to ask you, too, you know, there is a difference between the rainwater that we get and the snowpack that we get. Why is it important to distinguish the difference when it comes to making a difference with our drought problems out west? So the rain is important because we, we get that water immediately. And that water, even though it sits in people's front yards and fields, it does help to recharge groundwater. Um, whereas the snowpack, that accumulates throughout the winter. And the benefit with that accumulation is we get to use that natural reservoir throughout the spring and summer to refill the reservoirs that filled up with that rainfall. So the snowpack is really our, our secondary um, natural reservoir that we really, really rely upon to um, give us water throughout the warm season when it's very dry in much of the western U.S. And Ben, we know not all the snow is the same, right? And so when we look at the snowpack, important to talk about snow water equivalent. Can you explain what that is? And important with atmospheric river, there's going to be a higher content of that water, how that kind of helps us as well. Yeah, so snow water equivalent is a very, very important value that we measure in the snowpack, and that is essentially how much liquid water exists in that snowpack. If you were to melt all of that snow, how much liquid water would you get? So a more inland or interior United States snowpack is going to have, for the same amount of depth, typically a lot less water than along the coastal regions of the western United States. And atmospheric rivers characteristically bring denser snow, so snow water ratios on the order of 1 to 8 or 1 to 10, whereas colder storms are typically on the order of 1 to 15 or maybe 1 to 20. So we get a lot more bang for our buck with these denser types of events. However, as you can see there, it's more difficult to deal with that yeah. snow. It starts weighing heavily on your roofs, on, on other things. Um, so it, it does bring a little bit of challenge with it, but we, we really like getting all of that water. I kind of think of it as like a slow release Tylenol. Yeah. I don't know if that exists, go. but yeah, like a slow release and it, it really is beneficial. And we're hoping again, we can bank on some more moisture as we continue to try to dig out of this drought. Ben Hatchett, professor of atmospheric science at the Desert Research Institute. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.